Yo, what's going on guys? We finally got our first balance patch in Helldivers 2. Buffing some weapons that actually feel amazing now, and then also nerfing some fan favorite meta weapons. And I wanted to give you guys some feedback on what I think about these buffs and nerfs as a whole, and then in true YouTuber fashion, I'm gonna be putting these on a tier list to rank them. So before we get into it, don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more Helldivers 2 content, and let's get straight into it. Now, what I wanna do first is talk about about my thoughts on the patch as a whole before we rank the specific buffs and nerfs. And I'll be adding timestamps down below if you want to skip this part and just see my thoughts on the weapons after the nerfs or weapons after the buffs, so go ahead and skip to that part if you'd like. However, one of the devs over at Arrowhead wrote up this blog post on the reasonings behind the patch and why they chose to nerf some things this early on in the first real balance patch and I wanted to leave my two cents on the situation. Now, first off, we gotta get this out of the way. None of the three nerfs to the railgun, breaker, or shield generator were really that significant at all, in my opinion. If anything, the railgun was hit the hardest in the fact that it has a lot more trouble dealing with bile titans now, but it's only a little bit slower at killing everything else. You basically just have to always use it in unsafe mode now. And I actually think the ideas behind these nerfs are justified when you look at other support weapons like the recoilless, the autocannon, the spear, which are much better weapons with team reloading, yet the railgun gets all these benefits with none of the trade-offs. But I don't think that they should have nerfed it at this time. I think that nerfing guns in the first balance patch was probably done because it's an easy thing to do. All they probably did was tweak a few stats here and there and then push this patch out. But that doesn't mean that you should push it out to the game just yet, just because you can do it right now. Because I think the biggest reason for running the railgun wasn't the overall power of it, but rather the ease of use and the fact that it didn't have to be the highest damaging thing in the game because it's the easiest thing to use and it still absolutely got the job done. If anything, the recoilless rifle and the spear, from what I can tell, both do more damage than the railgun, but it's not super easy to use them unless you have a teammate reloading it for you. Now the problem with these team weapons, and the reason I think that people don't use them as much, is because of the backpack. And no, it's not because you have to sacrifice your backpack slot, it's because you have to convince a teammate to sacrifice their backpack slot. So the trade-off doesn't only affect your own build, it doesn't only affect you. You have to convince an entire second person to sacrifice their backpack slot for you. And this is a problem in the simple fact that a tons of people play this game solo in the quick play function. A lot of these quick play lobbies aren't even using microphones. And personally, I feel they should add the ability for you to wear your own backpack, hold your own gun, but a teammate can still hop on and speed load it for you, and then I think these weapons would be a lot more popular. And this is the perfect segue into the fact that I just don't think they should have released any nerfs in the game yet, even though I think that some of these nerfs were justified, and I also don't think th that the breaker or the shield generator are really that much worse at all. In fact, when I was streaming this today, a lot of people were asking me, what's the new best primary gun now? when the breaker does just as much damage as it did before. The only difference is you have a couple less ammo per magazine and a little more recoil, so you simply just have to aim your shots a bit better with the breaker and not just spray and pray it. And by the way, the buff to the spray and pray was actually really decent in the fact that if you're a player who loves to just spray down the breaker, then go try out the, the breaker spray and pray. But the breaker is still the king. It still does the most damage. It still staggers enemies, which is very important for preventing flares, and it is still one of the best primary weapons in the game, if not the best. But that's the reason I don't think there should have been any nerfs yet, until they find ways to tune up other weapons and convince people to use them. This entire meta discussion within the community is a bit misleading in my opinion, because before any of these nerfs, I've only been posting videos about underrated weapons and strategies. My community hasn't been using the breaker or the railgun for over a week now. None of us were affected by these nerfs at all, but it's still not a good look for the overall community who do believe that these weapons are meta. And at the same time, I do agree that there is a lot of other primary weapons and support weapons, particularly assault rifles, that need to be looked at, and essentially convince people to switch off of these meta weapons a lot more before you decide to nerf them. So basically, buff before you nerf rather than buff instead of nerf. Because I think the nerfs were honestly justified in a sense, but there is a more pragmatic way to go about it. And with that rant over and done with, let's get into the tier list of these buffs and nerfs. So let me go ahead and just take the breaker shotgun, put it up into S tier, 
Let's go ahead and take the railgun. We'll say low S, high A. I think the railgun is definitely a bit worse because the overall ease of use for taking out Bile Titans was important for the ranking of this gun, but I do still think that ease of use still makes this gun a top choice. You can still run this if you want to. And I will say that when it comes to chargers, for example, it only takes one more shot to strip the leg armor. And, um, and I'll play some clips of that in the background. The overall viability of this weapon hasn't really gone down too much. It's just that you're gonna need to call in some 500 kilogram bombs to take out Bile Titan. And by the way, I just posted a Bile Titan deep dive that teaches you how to kill Bile Titans without the railgun. So go check that out. Now, when it comes to the shield generator pack, this is still an S tier pick. Now, personally, I feel that this is still S tier is because of the use of it against robots and bugs. For robots, it helps you not get cheese one shot, which it's still good for. And against bugs, it still nullifies nearly all the slow effects, unless you get hit while it's down, of course. Now, the biggest change to the shield regenerator pack is it now has a slider next to the icon, and this shield pack has to be fully broken before it can start recharging. That is the main nerf to this, but it is still overall usable, and it's still a really good choice. All right, now let's talk about everybody's fan favorite right now, the Flamethrower. I am going to rank this in high A tier, and I'll tell you guys why I'm not putting it in S tier. Now, the Flamethrower is finally usable, and I'm actually very happy about this. I'm going to be posting a specific Flamethrower video going over the mechanics of these weapons and breaking down how I am killing chargers this fast. Sorry, guys, I got to save that for the next video but the flamethrower is actually usable now it kills and by the way it's only for bugs it's not for robots because this is a close range weapon and a lot of the times when you're fighting robots they're at a long range it's not that you necessarily can't kill robots with it but there's really no point in taking this into any sort of long range battle now not only does the flamethrower kill chargers almost instantly it also takes down all the swarms of bugs this is possibly one of the fastest mob clearing weapons in the game and that leads me why i'm putting it into high a tier and that's because for some reason this gun does zero damage against bile titans i sat there and wasted like three tanks into a bile titan and it just did not seem to kill it now i don't know if bile titans are like covered in flame retardant or what but it just really can't do any damage to them However, if you're in a two-man squad, three-man squad, four-man squad, it is completely justifiable for one or even two players to bring this with them. You just have to make sure that someone else on the team does not have this gun because someone needs to be focusing on those Bile Titans. Next, let's talk about the Breaker Spray and Pray. Now, I'm torn on whether I want to put this into A or B tier. Now, this gun is definitely usable now. I don't think that this gun is better than the normal breaker in any way shape or form and that is mainly due to the fact that the breaker spray and pray does not stagger enemies at all so if a bug is calling for a breach or a robot is sticking his arm up for a flare you have to actually land a kill shot on them with this weapon to stop them from doing that and that is one of the most important mechanics for not letting uh the difficulty sort of landslide you and letting enemies overrun you However, you know, I am more inclined to put this into low A tier. If you have a good support weapon to pair with this, you can use this to clear hordes and swap over to your secondary to deal with those flare dudes. Because this gun will actually deal damage to anything that doesn't have medium armor now, and it'll kill them pretty fast. Well, actually, I am going to keep it in high B tier, and that's because we're going to talk about the Punisher now, which is slightly better than this gun, and it is due to that stagger effect. So the main buff to the Punisher, and also the Slugger was affected by this, we're going to go over the Slugger next, is in the fact that the Punisher staggers enemies like crazy, and I believe this is one of the high, most high damage weapons now. This gun is really strong, and it's insanely fun to use, but we got to keep our boy the Slugger right above it at A tier, and that's because even though the Slugger does a little bit less damage, it does penetrate medium armor. It does break open those supply doors that everybody loves breaking. And most importantly, it staggers enemies. Now, the main buff to these two weapons was in the ammo capacity. They buffed both of these ammo capacities up to 60 shots, and they also made it so when you pick up an ammo box, it actually fully refills the reserve ammo and next i want to talk about the laser cannon now just like the flamethrower is for the bugs the laser cannon is a little bit better against the bots and while i'm putting the flamethrower in high a tier because it can't deal with bile titans 
it's kind of the same deal with the laser cannon, but the laser cannon is a little bit worse overall. It doesn't have the same ad clear that the flamethrower has. However, one thing I think everyone's going to be interested in seeing is that this laser cannon deletes hulks. It literally obliterates them. You can, since this now has medium armor penetration, you can shoot it into their faceplate. And I think it is also worth noting that my footage did happen to be on an icy planet. Now, I didn't do this on purpose, but when I was streaming this earlier, someone in chat mentioned that I was actually using it on an ice planet and that means that the laser didn't overheat as easily and remember that the laser cannon is actually unusable almost on uh, hot planets because you run out of capacity very fast and then you have to replace the, the coil or whatever. Now, what's amazing about this gun is it literally deletes hulks as I showed you guys in the clips. You can actually shoot the front of the scout riders, but it is a bit slow at actually killing them because I always thought that the front of their plate was heavy armor. I guess it's considered medium armor. I really don't know, or at least the laser cannon can get through it. And unfortunately, when I tried this against a tank, it's just not feasible. Uh, it does bounce off the front of the tank. I'm sure it could take out the tank from behind because I think you just need medium penetrating stuff to kill tanks from the back. But this the, this gun really is not good for tanks at all. I don't recommend bringing it. And just the simple fact that it doesn't have the same mob clearing as it does the flamethrower. I'm putting this into high B tier instead of high A tier. However, if you like laser weapons, if you like the laser cannon, this gun is very viable against robots. However, it's not one of those guns that's going to solo carry you through a hell dive difficulty it's more so a fun option that is actually just viable rather than a really strong and overpowered weapon but i do recommend trying it if that's what you wanted to play with is this gun next we're going to talk about some of the barrages we have the i don't know which ones these are i'm going to call this one on the left the 120 and this one on the right the 380 now both of these are usable i'm more inclined to put these into c tier for two different reasons now number one i actually did throw one of these down earlier and after i shot the bio titan sack on his stomach one of these missiles did hit it and actually basically one shot it however there is a bit of randomness to both of these barrages you can't just throw this down near a bio titan and expect it to hit them every single time there's a lot of randomness when it comes to these now personally i prefer the 120 over the 380 just because it is a tighter spread Red, so a little bit of that randomness is cut down personally if you guys want a really good barrage i recommend the walking barrage because the walking barrage uh was actually really cool when i tried it now i am going to experiment more with it but i just like that a lot better than these two and then we have the needs work tier now you're going to notice that i put uh the liberator into here because i mentioned assault rifles earlier and i think the reason why a lot of people don't like the primary weapon options is that the assault rifles feel like they need work now i don't know if the damage needs buffed i don't know if the mag capacity needs buffed i don't know if this just needs some ease of use tweak but i think a lot of people like shooting assault rifles and i don't think any of the assault rifles feel particularly strong in the game next let's talk about some of the armor fixes because they finally did fix the armor armor values between heavy and light armor. Now I loaded into a level one difficulty map with heavy armor on. I will say that I do feel a difference between heavy and light armor. And when I'm wearing the heavy armor with the 50% explosive resistance, guess what? I'm not going to get one shot from a random rocket anymore. I'm not going to get randomly sniped by a freaking rocket devastator anymore. And when that happened to me, it felt really great. But then I realized I could just get two shot by them. And I do think that the armor system needs a bit more work. You know, I don't know how many rockets with this specific heavy armor, the 50% explosive resistance. I don't know how many rockets is justified in me taking. Personally, I feel like I should be able to take four rockets without dying and then the fifth one kills me. Maybe that's too much, but, but as it sits right now, I don't see any reason to use heavy armor. You know, light armor is just so valuable in the movement and the stamina you gain from it. I'm just not sure there's any reason to use heavy armor as it sits right now because movement in this game is much stronger. If you can just avoid shots altogether, then honestly, that's going to win out over heavy armor. So I do just think they need to put a little more work into heavy armor and even medium armor, in my opinion, before it's justified to put those on. And finally, we're putting the spear into needs more work. Now, if you guys didn't know, this actually 
did get a little stealth buff because the ammo, the random ammo packs you used to find didn't give you any ammo to the spear, but now it does. If you find a random ammo pack, it'll finally reload your spear. So for those very few people who like using the spear, rejoice in the fact that you can get random ammo pickups and get more ammo in your backpack. However, I really want them to fix the spear's lock-on targeting system. Now, I don't know if it's actually broken or if it just has trouble locking onto things, but definitely make it way more consistent. And then I think people will, will not be upset about the railgun because when the spear works, it actually works. If you shoot out the Bile Titan's stomach before launching one of these at it, you can one-shot it or you could just two-shot it with two spears. This thing one-shots uh, enemy dropships. And I actually don't think this is able to lock onto dropships. I think I've only one-shot dropships when it actually locked onto a heavy armor on the dropship and then it accidentally hit the dropship. I'm not really sure. But I do think that this weapon's targeting system really needs to be looked at and then a lot more people will like to use it. So that's it for today's video. Let me know what you guys thought about this patch in the comment section down below. Like I said, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe join the Discord, follow me on Twitch, all that good stuff. It's all in the pinned comment or the description, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm out.